Hey, so we're talking about the WikiLeaks email hack of the John Podesta. Now, John Podesta, one of the most powerful men in the world. And uh, th he's uh, kind of by proxy in charge of their surveillance state. Like, a, you know, he's the head of the campaign for Hillary Clinton. She was secretary of state. The Barack Obama is running a surveillance state. OK, just so you know, you don't have uh, you don't have any privacy, as they say in England. No privacy. Uh, every email, every phone call you make is being monitored by the government. And as Chris Hedges says, that's not liberty. That's not liberty. That that uh, that best resembles the relationship between a master and his slave. So that that's where we are. Plus, we got rid of habeas corpus and whatever. We we live in a sham democracy with sham liberty and sham freedom. We don't have any of those things. Uh, we pass just things like the Patriot Act because nobody reads it except for Dennis Kucinich. That's right. Uh, so we're at the end of an empire, right? Our empire is about to end. Uh, in case you didn't know, keep voting neoliberal. Anyway, uh, this is from one of our speechwriters for uh, Hillary, and it's to Podesta. And uh, he says, uh, I want to share our draft of a letter on trade. This is a speechwriter. He said, I want to share our draft of a letter on trade. He says, as you'll recall, the idea here is to use this to lay out her thinking on TPP and TPA. Right? Let me bring this over a little bit. Uh, a head of action on the Hill and a joint letter by all the former secretaries of state and defense. This draft assumes that she's ultimately going to support both the TPA and the TPP. It focuses on what needs to happen to produce a positive result with TPP and cast support for the TPA as one of those steps. It also says that we should walk away if the final agreement doesn't meet the test of creating more jobs than it displaces, helping the middle class, and strengthening our national security. You notice nothing on the environment is one of the, she has three tests. This is what they're going to say. When she passes the TPP when she's president, unless Obama does it in the lame duck, this is what they will say. She'll say, well, it, it creates more jobs than it displaces. We're going to actually have more job in America than we ship out. That's not true. Uh, and it then helps the middle class. Doesn't help the middle class. And it strengthens our national security. What does that mean? I don't know. So one of those tests is not the environment. Which is one of the biggest red flags in that thing. One of the biggest, one of the, one of the tests, not the climate change, not the environment. Isn't that interesting, right? Yeah, the deregulation there is, is stifling. I mean, that was one of the biggest red flags initially. And so, again, there's, there's getting ready because she's going to be for the... Uh, we've tried to speak directly to the most prominent concerns expressed by Labor and the Hill Democrats, including Warren, including Warren. Why would you say including? Because they, what, they've been excluding? Well, she's uh, been one of the big dissenters. And it, says, it ends with, of course, if we go ahead with a meeting with Hillary to lay out the pros and cons and then come to a different conclusion, this letter would change dramatically. So that's the whole, uh, I'd say you the whole thing. Uh, that's just a little insight. These are all, so none of these things by on their own make you go, well, some of them do. I mean, uh, and this certainly doesn't help. The T, oh, you know, about TPP, about TPA, and this is our, there you go. I just want to share that with you. There's a lot more. Uh, we've already covered some of the WikiLeaks. We'll be covering more. Have you read any of the WikiLeaks, Ron? Yeah, I've looked at some of it. I mean, most of the stuff I, I heard on Democracy Now! when uh, the, uh, what's his name, Ken Fang from the Inner Fong? Center? Fong, yeah, yeah, excuse me. Fong was uh, summarizing a bunch of them yeah. and going through a bunch of them. That was, like, mostly where I got it. Right. Um, and there was nothing terribly surprising. Yes, yeah, she's very pro-fracking. She's eventually going to cave on, on the TPP. Like, it was all kind of stuff you knew. You just really have the assurance there it is staring you in the face. What scares me the most is how some folks on the left that are still trying to tie it up and put a bow on it, they're using, they're like, well, Russia was behind it. And it's like, I mean, this is almost like the nationalism that Trump and his yes. people are parroting. And it's yes, like, it that's is. scary to not just be like, okay, this is valid information. Um, right. And we got to just kind of accept this, but still deal with the reality we're dealing with or whatever they're saying. Saying, well, Russia. So don't look. Russia. That's, that's yeah. Don't look. Don't look at the. 
It doesn't matter where the information comes from. And WikiLeaks didn't hack Podesta's email. Okay, WikiLeaks, actually an award-winning journalism organization. <laughs> and uh, that, it doesn't, if you're a journalist and you get information about the powerful, you're supposed to release it. And you're supposed to do it uh, in a, uh, what do you call, well, uh, like when Glenn Greenwald got the, the Snowden stuff. Like they went through it and released what they thought was relevant and tried to not release stuff that they thought would unnecessarily hurt someone or risk state secrets unnecessarily or whatever. WikiLeaks doesn't really do that. They just kind of make everything available. I, I don't know. Is that good, that bad? So now people like uh, uh, Chris Hayes was talking about like, oh, they left out. A, uh, somebody was going to commit suicide, was suicidal on the campaign. And now their personal history is out there. Yeah, I guess uh, it was the head of the campaign <laughs> or, or somebody pretty high up in the campaign. I don't want to say it wasn't the head of the campaign. Um, and we're going to, you know what? I'm going to do another video about that. So don't worry about that. We're going to do another video about it. And, uh, yeah, these all, when you say there's no surprises, it's because briberies become legal and corruptions become normal. And that's why there's no surprises in any of these emails. Yeah, and these were already bedfellows we were aware of. We already knew that she was doing the bidding of Goldman Sachs. How, you know, and then, of course, the email comes out that she says, oh, I have a private position. I have a position that I tell you guys, the bankers, the, the real uh, guys who pull, pull the real levers of power. I can be honest with you, but when I talk to the knuckleheads, I have to say something else. So that happened, and then she spins it that she was—anyway. So we're going to do more of these.